Welcome back to the Daily Dope Show. And uh, my name is OG Brand over here. Matter of fact, <clears throat> quadruple OG. Plus some. <laughs> um, and in all my years, I have never seen or heard a president say that they would support any kind of legalization of marijuana. However, we have just come to a historical point in the prohibition of marijuana. And uh, that is that the President of the United States has said publicly that he will support legislation that is going through uh, <clears throat> the process of getting um, introduced and getting co-sponsors and whatnot. He said he'll support this. And if you remember from yesterday, not even 24 hours ago, I made a video about this uh, bill called the States Act. And uh, quite frankly, I, <laughs> I was wondering, I was looking for a reason to get excited about it. Well, I've found the reason. And the reason is, is that the President of the United States is behind it. It's got bipartisan support already. Uh, let me get, you know, it's got, well, you know, there's there's a few things about it that uh, it doesn't do. And to me, that's, a, that's not very cool. You know, it doesn't take a, a cannabis off schedule, off the CSA. But we can't get everything, right? And the thing about it is, is, this is kind of a response to Jeff Sessions uh, rescinding the coal memo. Because <clears throat> remember way back earlier this uh, in Sessions' career this year, he decided to make a big move and rescind the coal memo, which protected states that had legalized marijuana um, from federal intervention if they followed a certain set of guidelines <clears throat> that basically, you know, said that kids weren't accessing cannabis, <clears throat> cannabis wasn't floating around out of their state and into states where it's not legal, and other things, you know, that the federal government probably already takes care of anyway without having to <clears throat> worry about whether there's a coal memo in place or not. And that's a lot of... Uh, the things I've been talking about since this broke out is, you know, when it comes to the DEA, they don't really do a whole lot of actions like bus dispensaries and stuff like that. If they do, they just have like a ancillary role where they help the local cops or give the local cops a little bit of resources that they need. This whole idea that, you know, the DEA was going to go crack down on uh, legal marijuana business uh, businesses and states where it was legalized basically existed on a notion that they would start doing something completely like new <laughs> not really too new because if you your memory back goes back to uh bush and on the beginning of the clinton uh the beginning of the obama the end of the clinton all through the bush and the beginning of the obama presidencies we had raids from the DEA in California at medical marijuana dispensaries, and it was a mess. It was a real mess. So it's not unprecedented, but we wasn't expecting to see this kind of thing happen. Uh, and Sessions, you know, whatever, we'll get into him in a minute. So let me just cover this story because I don't really want to spend too much time on it, but I'm probably going to end up spending a few minutes here. Because there's a little bit to this. <clears throat> so, the big story's out, and I mean this is huge. I've done this weed reporting for a couple years on this channel, and then before that, a couple, uh, a few years where I was finding these stories and sharing them with people my own way. But this is ridiculous. This is everybody that ever wrote about weed wrote about this. And so that's what it is. I mean, you know, let's just take a look at it. Trump says he really supports Senate Majority, 
uh, Senate marijuana le- le- uh, legislation. Excuse me. It's been a long day. And this is Tom Angel, Marijuana Moment. One of the people that we go to the most these days because he covers everything. So if you don't know who Tom Angel is or who Marijuana Moment is, take a little time out of your day and go hit a like on Facebook. Go follow him on Twitter or whatever you got to do. Get the newsletter. Um, Go to his Patreon. Throw him some money. He deserves it. And he dug up this clip here that has the... You know, and in this clip, there's a small part where they ask him about it. He's talking about the, uh, the you know, the the thing that Cory Gardner and uh, Elizabeth Warren put together that I wasn't too excited about, and I didn't even think it had much of a hope to get out of, uh, you know, to to launch. But you know what, guys, I I'm gonna say this right now preliminarily. I'm gonna say this might be the one. This might be the one that gets to the floor. This might be the one that gets the votes. This might be the one that gets enacted into law. And I'm not, I'm, again, I'm not super excited about that. I'm happy about it, but it's something that should have been done right when uh, Sessions rescinded the Cole memo. Immediately, they should have debated that um, because it was working so good. And there was really no reason to to do anything like rescind it, because you, the reason you would rescind something was be, would be because it isn't working. It's not doing the desired results. And by all measure, the Cole memo was a good way to monitor the states that had uh, regulated marijuana, so that they did follow these simple guidelines, and that the federal government could oversee it in that uh, capacity. Um. <clears throat> So they should have done that right when he rescinded it. They should have been like, wait a minute, what? Let's take the, let's just argue this in the House, hammer out a piece of legislation and make this thing a law. And we had calls from Blumenauer and even Cory Gardner and others to do just that right when that happened. And again, in all this, I have to thank Jeff Sessions for... First of all, when he came in and he said, one of the things he said that was pretty profound to me was, you know, you guys got to like, you got to go through Congress if you want to change the laws. Don't yell at me for enforcing the laws. And, you know, my argument there was you didn't have to rescind the coal memo. You know, (laughs) you could just let, you can just enforce the laws where you can still enforce the laws. The coal memo just protects people that are going to regulate things and, you know, police them themselves. But all that aside, thank Jeff Sessions for basically pointing out what we need to do, which is go through Congress and change the laws. And then his, the second part of what he's been doing as an antagonist is kind of lurking around the shadows with these <clears throat> loosely veiled threats about cracking down on legal marijuana in places like Colorado. And, and it just, you know... I think what it's what it is, and you're starting to see this evolve more and more, is he's helping insulate the corporate takeover, and but, and I know people, some people might get sick of hearing me talk about this corporate takeover, but we have to be careful how we do this going forward. All right, and one of the things that you could say is, oh well, you know, lately they said that they're going to help enforce um, state regulations because they go after these 70 grow houses that some Chinese cartel started. Well, you know, the DEA would have been the ones to go after them anyway, no matter what, even if marijuana was completely legal and some cartel came in here to try to do some illegal shit, the DEA would be all over it. All right. So thank you, Jeff Sessions for basically lighting the fire under the ass of our government to get to work on this thing. And ever since he said that, oh, you got to go talk to Congress about it. And even before that, um, politicians have been dropping bills left and right to try to do things to, you know, patchwork style fixes to try to help the marijuana industry that has been blooming over the last 10, 15 years. So anyway, let's just hear Trump say this real quick, and then we'll move on. Different country. 
I really do. I support Senator Gardner. Uh, I know exactly what he's doing. We're looking at it. But I probably will end up supporting that, yes. First Lady's great. That's what he's got. I mean, hey, you can't really, uh, you can't mess with that. Um, and I do got some quotes I want to read from people. Uh, we'll do this one here. We have, it's a positive sign that President Trump's first cannabis comment as the commander-in-chief was to support the States Act. The real question is how will Speaker Ryan, Leader McConnell, react? Normal political director Justin Streckel told Marijuana Moment in an interview. The burden is now on the congressional gatekeepers to pass the bill so we can finally end Attorney General Jeff Sessions' legal ability to infringe upon the progress we have made in 46 states and unshackle state lawmakers to end crim uh, criminalization once and for all. <clears throat> in a tweet, Congressional uh, Congressman David Joyce, Republican from Ohio, who is supporting a companion bill to the Warren Gardner proposal in the House, said that Trump's comment represented big news for the rights of our state voters and those suffering. Um, thanks for bringing us that, Tom, the video and the quote. Um, <clears throat> and also this story also from Tom Angel, also from June 8th, bipartisan governor's call for federal marijuana reform. And this is what I meant earlier when I say this might be the one that breaks through Pete Sessions and McConnell and Paul Ryan and all that. This might be the one just because this. <laughs> the governors of 12 states, that's more than one-fifth of the country, are calling on congressional leaders to enact far-reaching marijuana legaliza uh, legislation that would let states enact legalization without federal interference. Quote, our states have acted with the deliberation and care to implement programs through thoughtful and comprehensive uh, legislation and regulations, the bipartisan collection of governors wrote. Quote, our citizens have spoken. We are responding. We ask that Congress recognize and respect our state efforts by supporting and passing the States Act. The legislation, the Strengthening the Tenth Amendment and Trusting States Act, which is the House Companion, would amend the Federal Controlled Substances Act to exempt state legal marijuana activity from its provisions. It would also protect banks that would work with legal cannabis businesses and legalize industrial hemp. So, you know, like, I, I wasn't too excited about this when I made the video about the act, but, you know, those things there, those those points there, I was just like the point that we protect the states in general, is like, this is stuff that should have been done when he, you know, rescinded the coal memo. And now we're, this is just how slow the government works. Now we're finally getting to, oh, hey, you rescinded the coal memo? Psh, let's try this stuff. And if there's one thing that's going to screw this whole thing up and derail it, it's probably this Banks deal. <clears throat> I mean, even with the hemp, you have McConnell on your side. And I don't know if Pete Sessions is a big fan of hemp, but I'm sure you could talk him into it. But when it comes to Banks, there's a lot of people, including Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell, and others, that are, you know, they're looking out for the Banks. And quite frankly, the Banks are holding out until they're done laundering billions of dollars for drug cartels that sell weed and coke and all that other shit to America. Because currently, they're just like cashing checks every day. They're money laundering for the cartels. We know they are. And they're going to continue to do that. And they're going to be happy doing that rather than doing banking for a bunch of, you know, dirty hippie marijuana businesses. Because that's what banksters look at us like. Signing the new letter to congressional leaders are the governors of Alaska, California, Colorado, Maryland, Massachusetts, Nevada, New Jersey, New York, North Dakota, Oregon, Pennsylvania, and Washington State. Six are Republicans and six are Democrats. Thanks to all of you governors for this first. Second, let me just say... And Trump is proof positive of this because I never heard anything about Obama signing the coal memo into law. I'm sure the idea was floated 
I don't know what his comment would have been on that, but um, I'm sure now he's got something to say about it. <laughs> Whatever. Um, and as far as Trump goes, if anybody thinks he's doing a flip-flop or some shit, this is his campaign promise. This is what he promised us. He said medical marijuana should be legal. Everybody thinks that, right? And then he also said, oh, and by the way, um, shouldn't recreational be up to the states? I'm a states' rights guy. That's what Trump said. So this is not a flip-flop. This is just Trump doing what he said he was going to do. And I, I respect him for that. I'm not a partisan person. I'm not a partisan hack. I'm for the people and not the corporations. Obviously, you probably figured that out by now. I'm for the people and not the elite billionaires that try to play our politicians like a bunch of puppets. And I recognize that puppetry, and I call it out whenever I see it. And I don't see anything sketchy going on here. This just looks like some legitimate shit. And, you know, this is this needs to be done. It's, you know, I wasn't too excited about it when I made the video about it. But that don't mean I don't, I'm not for this. This is 100%... A no-brainer. Of course, we need to protect the states that are trying to do their, uh, you know, laboratory of democracy. Didn't we just offer that same protection to states that want to legalize gambling? Don't we already do that with gambling? Isn't it already one of the same things? <clears throat> so we got some more stuff here. Legalization advocates say it makes sense that governors would ask Congress to pass the new bill. The Stakes Act is the most significant piece of marijuana-related legislation ever introduced in Congress. Don Murphy, director of the Federal Policies for the Marijuana Policy Project, told Marijuana Moment in an interview. I don't know why he says that specifically about this bill, but I think it, it's not because of the contents of what's in the Stakes Act that makes it the most significant piece of marijuana-related legislation ever introduced to Congress. It's the fact that you have the attention of the president of the United States, and he's a Republican. Two things that I never thought, that's, that's like a brain crasher kind of flip, like what? <laughs> and again and again and again, I just keep beating it into this talking point into the ground that um, talking points are important, and... Uh, I don't know, I got lost in my thoughts there because I've seen another headline. Um, but we'll, we'll add that in because it kind of falls right along with what, what the next piece of this is. So Sessions wasn't invited to the White House marijuana talks. Oscar Pasquale. Um, and we're just going to read his quotes out of this article. I was not a participant in the meetings he had at the White House, so I don't know the details of that, except that it remains clear that the Cole Memo has been withdrawn, and the impact of that is essentially to make clear that we are not guaranteeing or and cannot guarantee persons who use or distribute marijuana are protected from federal prosecution. I don't think that's appropriate for me to, in effect, violate or neuter federal marijuana laws. And I say to that sessions, you're you're just you just never give up, do you? But the thing is, is you've you haven't done anything. All you did is rescind the coal memo. That's getting to be a long time ago. What what have you done since then? Crack down on hemp a little bit, talk shit about uh you know, Kratom. I mean, you didn't personally do anything. You're just you're just the one out there grandstanding. And what I see more and more from these people in the government is that they're insulating the corporate takeover and Jeff Sessions <clears throat> is the ultimate, you know, threat. And this is what keeps the prices in legal marijuana states just right hovering, hovering right around the same area as the prices for black market weed in those same states or even in states right next door. Basically, we're talking about, you know, stuff that's like reasonable but not nice. Like you're thinking, oh, wow, marijuana is legal now. Cool. I should be able to go get a, a, a bulk bag of it at the produce section in the grocery <laughs> store for 
four dollars a pound or whatever i mean it's not gonna ever be like that guys but what it is gonna be like is it's gonna be like this like totally like lamed out version of everything to do with marijuana that's what they want sessions don't even want that though he just wants you to be afraid of them coming to kick your door in so that everybody still has the same price on everything. Because all the projections for the corporate marijuana takeover are based on black market prices of today. You know, the only way they're going to make their green rush billions is if, they're can, if they can charge more than 10 bucks a gram for weed. And so on and so forth. Or whatever you want to do. Sessions has dramatically fallen out of Trump's favor these days, and his anti-legalization stance has long been in contrast with Trump's campaign platform to leave marijuana enforcement to the discretion of the states. Senator Warren said in a statement that Washington needs to get out of the business of outlawing marijuana. It means right now that, for example, in Colorado and soon in Massachusetts, someone who buys marijuana, someone who sells marijuana, is complying with state law, but they are in violation of federal law, and that puts them at risk, Warren added. Very good, very good. Um, I guess he was pretty bummed out about that. But... Yeah, same quote. <laughs> um, so we go to the the radio interview with Colorado Public Radio, and I got a few things from that too. So Sessions uh, will still enforce federal drug laws despite Gardner Marijuana Trump deal. But the thing about it is, is he hasn't done a bust yet that I you know that I could publicize and be like, oh, here's the marijuana crackdown. He just went into you know, ABC buds and crack down on their warehouse. And turns out they had 61,000 plants growing. So he said, he's going to give the, uh, CEO the death penalty. None of that shit's happened. You know, it's just all like va thinly veiled threats. Sessions tells Colorado matters that despite an apparent, uh, Gardner Trump deal, he was never told by the president to back off. Quote, we respect Colorado and its laws like we do other states, and we enforce federal law around the country, said Sessions, who is Denver and, wait, who is Denver and scheduled to speak, I think it's, they was supposed to be who is in Denver, and scheduled to speak Friday at the Western Conservative Summit. Quote, we were not ordered to do anything other than policies that we intend to carry out nationally. Sessions said he'll keep an eye on Congress action. But in the meantime, he intends on to enforce current statutes. Mm. It remains clear that the Cole memo has been withdrawn, blah, blah, blah. I already read that one. And then, so here's some stuff from the interview. On the uses of marijuana, I don't think the substance personally is a good, healthy thing. When we talk about marijuana, we need to make it clear that whether we legalize it or not, that it's not a good thing to consume. God, I wish you would just get off of this whole idea of marijuana is not good, bad, bad, not good. That's just the stupidest shit you could say. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. I think there's a universal belief that it's pretty particularly dangerous. No, there's not, actually. There's not a universal belief there. There's a lot of people that are brainwashed by people like you with your stupid propaganda, but there's not a universal belief that it's particularly dangerous. In fact, there's an intellectual movement building up around the fact that it's not even dangerous at all. <laughs> there may be some medical uses for it in proper doses. You don't understand how cannabis works or what an endocannabinoid system is when you talk about doses of cannabis, you dummy. All right, but fundamentally, it's just not a healthy thing. Um, you know what, dude? You're a politician. You're not anything but a politician. So you saying that doesn't mean shit to anybody. So fuck off. Particularly not healthy for young people. It does impact their developing brains and can be, and be a permanent damage to those brains. No, it can't be. I've been smoking weed <clears throat> for a long time, man. I've been smoking weed for over 30 years. 
I started when I was really young. I don't think I got brain damage, dude. I don't think I have any problems at all long term from marijuana. In fact, I smoked cigarettes for 30 fucking years. And I quit cold turkey. And I don't have any negative side any any negative health effects from smoking cigarettes. And I I I give all the credit for that for uh on weed. All right, on the marijuana industry, I can't give them immunity. I can't guarantee that they're free from any consequences from an act that is contrary to United States law. We got priorities. You you do got priorities, and marijuana should not be anything on your list. And that's what the old system was, was like, hey, you don't have enough budget. You don't have the money for that. And quite frankly, come on, man. There's other things you guys should be focused on besides marijuana, whether it's illegal or not. You know, whether it's state regulated or some kingpin growing 20 grow houses in Alabama or whatever. Come on. You you got priorities and that shit shouldn't be one of them. U.S. attorneys around the country have heavy demands on them. And again, they're not fucking based on anything going on in marijuana. <laughs> it just ain't. There's never been any crime that's really around marijuana. Other than the fact that you guys call it a crime for someone to sell somebody a joint. Marijuana is not the kind of drug where people, generally speaking, go into a house, blow the people away, and steal the weed. It does happen from time to time because we live in a real desperate time. There's a lot of people that have been left behind by this economy, which quite frankly is a pretty shitty economy that only cares about the rich people. So... You just get the fuck out of here with this heavy demands. It's It has nothing to do with weed. And especially legal weed in legal states. So when you're talking about the industry, you should be able to give them immunity because you should be looking for the, the people breaking the real laws that don't have regulations that make them follow rules and shit. That's what she, that's, ain't that your job? Federal government has never prosecuted on any kind of regular basis small amounts of marijuana. It's just our priorities are smuggling rings and more deadly drugs normally. Why don't you just stick to that then, buddy? Um, whether marijuana can help people addicted to opioids. The argument is floated out there. I've not seen scientific results that would back that up. Well, why don't you go check it out? There's plenty of it. Plenty of it. Plenty of users that will testify. Uh, Chris Christie received over 12,000 comments about this. So you, I don't know how scientific you need when you have an actual addict that says they recovered using marijuana. How much more scientific do you want? Here's science for you. Why don't you go to a rehab clinic and pull some people aside and ask them how many times they've been to rehab. There you go, because for some reason, when you give people opioids to make them recover from opioids, they end up going back to opioids. I wonder why that is. It continues to be said, but we continue to see tremendous amounts of death from these opioids. Um, yeah. So why don't we switch them opioid addicts up over to something that don't kill them? There's no doubt about it, but it's true that many people addicted to opioids were heavy marijuana users before they became addicted. No, that's not true, first of all. And second of all, we don't care. That's not what we fucking asked you. And if it is true, these people can still get help using marijuana to get out of their opioid addiction. Don't you think? Or do you think it's going to make them go back, you know, like they get they use the marijuana and they're like, oh, now I need something stronger. This is the stupidest thing you've, you know, you, you adhere to this fucking gateway theory and it's so annoying. All right. Jeff Sessions is never going to change. And he's just, he's just an idiot. All right. But he ain't really doing anything. The DOJ ain't out there doing a, getting ready to kick in the door at something where there's a legal facility in any of these states that have legalized any kind of marijuana. So don't worry about it, guys. Go out there and do your thing. Because this guy is not going to do shit. He's not going to do any busts. 
I bet my bottom dollar. This guy's not going to do shit. All his threats are just designed to make people pay more money at the fucking counter when they buy grams of weed. I mean, his friends can't take this shit over. John Boehner's like, man, we need to, we need to scare people, man. We need to make hemp illegal. We need to make hemp CBD illegal so I can like make people go get a medical card and pay extra money for it. That's that's what these guys are doing, man. That's their scam. All right, I, I got. I, I think I had more stuff to say about this, but this is getting really long. Like I said, I didn't want to spend too much time on this. Overall, I've been spending a lot of time on this Trump Cory Gardner promise. I sure hope I, I hope to hell that this happens. And of course, it's going to get stopped by Pete Sessions or whatever. So expect that video somewhere down the road.